All right, you guys, this is Ross. I wanted to show you guys my garden. Awesome, right? Looks like a jungle gym. Looks like uh, I've been practicing to try out for like Ninja Warrior or some like obstacle course show. What's that show with John Cena nowadays? And uh, they basically watch people wipe out all the time. Anyway, that's not what we're doing here, okay? I'm not gonna do that. Probably wouldn't do well, and I don't need any more embarrassment. Um, <laughs> so what we've done though, as we've talked about in prior videos now, is we talked about the big change that was gonna happen to this space. This is my southern exposure garden. Get, we get the most amount of light here, most amount of heat in this location. And we used to have low tunnels up in the spring that covered this, really this whole area. Underneath the tunnels, I planted things like melons and tomatoes. We had all of our garlic, which I harvested all the garlic. It's inside right now curing, and I harvested it prematurely, and I was really worried about doing so because when you harvest garlic prematurely, it doesn't fully size up, and everyone always wants big garlic, right? I left a few plants in here to be for seed for next year, so that's what those are for when I, uh, I take those out very soon. Probably around the middle of June is really a good date to take up your garlic here in this area. But I had to get rid of a lot of the garlic. I had to prematurely take them up to make space for these cucumbers, the melons, the tomatoes, because that was my priority. That was the whole big plan with this summer garden. Not only did I want to grow food, by the way, guys, 365 days out of the year, because you know, I'd like to make use of my garden space. I don't have a whole lot of space. There's some over here that gets a lot less light. It's from more of those cool season crops. Um, you know, I'd like to make use of this. It's really, this is 10 foot wide by 17 feet deep. So it's only 170 square feet. And I really like to maximize my amount of food I can grow. And it, not only is it for me to get as much food as I can get, it's more fun, it's more entertaining. It's awesome, to, to, it's like cool to see how far you can push the limits. And also, I wanna try a, a lot of varieties. So this year, just in this plot, and I'll get into this whole jungle gym system here in a second, but just in this plot is like, you know, 30 varieties of tomatoes, or four, actually I think uh, 40 varieties of tomatoes, 20 varieties of melons or so. We have, uh, like eight varieties of peppers. We got the eggplants. We got even some volunteer tomatoes back here. I have even some tomatillos. We're really trying to maximize this space by growing vertically. And that's what all these trellises are for. This is, uh, if anyone maybe recognizes these trellis systems, it's from Josh Satin, Satin Hill Farms on YouTube. I think actually his channel is just Josh Satin and he talks about his trellis and I decided to go with it. And what we've done is we put in these T-posts at different heights, obviously. These tall ones here are 10 foot, driven in the ground uh, two feet. Boy, oh boy, was that a challenge too, to do by myself. Um, I really wanted the taller trellises because these melon plants will get massive. Even the tomatoes will get massive. It's not uncommon when you grow those plants vertically in one season, they'll very easily get to eight feet. And often they come down and cascade down for even more growth, more fruits. So I wanted to have higher trellises and I paid for it because uh, putting that up those days, that day I did it, I had to get up on a ladder, get the 10 foot long pole, reach as high as I could to then slam the thing in the ground with a T-post driver and let's say, one of the times I ended up falling off the ladder because I'm here I am just doing this motion on a ladder and I ended up crashing, luckily somewhat athletic to where I could jump off the ladder before it hit the ground. But still, you know, not probably not the greatest idea. However, these shorter trellises, you know, that are, let's say only six feet in height, you drive them in the ground about a, a foot, they, uh, they're great and they're easy to do. Anyone can do that. Anyone can put these in. Like I said, you just drive them in the ground and then in the top is a T. 
And then you throw in your EMT pole. I have a three fourth inch EMT pole that we've used in prior years to grow our tomato plants and things vertically. But that's all it is. You get the T post, the T, and then you slide in the EMT pole. And then at the top of these EMT poles, which I really should do today, I should probably finish this off, is attach the string. I have tomato twine, it goes all the way to the top and then all the way to the bottom and attaches to a bamboo stake. And then these plants that I grow vertically, once they get it high enough, tall enough, will very easily be trellised along that string. Each one of them will be wrapped, the string goes wrapped around it and supports the weight, doesn't damage the plant. It's a lot easier to do than I have done in the past with just these EMT poles and trellising up um, and having to tie them up there every day. It's a pain, but it's worth it for the amount of food you can grow. And that's really what this is all about. And again, it's like a form of inspiration. So every single one of these strings represents a plant. And every single string will have a plant, assuming they're healthy. Some of them actually have died already. But assuming we can get them up along these strings, they're going to get to the almost to the top, most of them, and have fruit. Uh, the only thing you kind of have to worry about is making sure they have enough food and certain minerals. Certainly the tomatoes, they get some blossom end rot. If you have them very dense, which all of our tomatoes are on this side, we, uh, we need to make sure that we give them enough calcium and magnesium to fight that blossom end rot. But I have them all labeled, all these different varieties. We have these tags on the ground. We got the herb garden in the front. We have our oregano, basil, rosemary thyme. This garden, it's just the amount of food that's going to come out of here is insane. And then in the back, we have a raised bed, which I really like to use for the tomatoes and the eggplants because they really benefit from that extra heat. And I did this better last year, actually. I've been really, um, didn't follow in the footsteps I used last year, unfortunately, but you can see those tomato plants, how big they are compared to some of the other ones, those were just volunteers underneath this low tunnel. If I have just direct seeded underneath the tunnels, my tomatoes, my eggplants, my peppers, everything, all these melons, these cucumbers, probably a lot healthier, a lot better off. And they have all that excess heat in the beginning of the season. I mean, they're, they would be insane at this point. So I kind of messed up, truthfully, but I know for the future that when I really want to grow these tomatoes and things like that, it's just very simple. Set up a tunnel, direct seed underneath. I don't even need transplants. They would be at this point massive and they're extremely healthy that way. So that's kind of what this jungle gym is about. <laughs> the Ninja Warrior Garden, we should call it this year. Um, hopefully some people know what I'm talking about. But that's kind of it. I have to do some weeding today. I have myself a hoe I ended up buying because there's, there's quite a bit of weeds this year. Um, I have to finish stringing up these plants. I'm, pro I'm probably going to harvest some of these carrots. Uh, let's see if we can get one here. These are the Tonda carrot, which is kind of funny how it looks, huh? This is a fatter, shorter carrot doesn't get long. It kind of looks like a baby carrot and they're supposed to be pretty darn good with their texture and things like that. Let's try it. Mmm. Very sweet. That's a good carrot. Kind of up there in quality, I would say, with mocha almost. I'm a big fan. Probably gonna harvest most of these carrots and snack on them. Clear out the weeds, like I said. Maybe we'll do another feeding of some kind. Um, I'm gonna really do the Dynagro Protect with Foliage Pro. That really helps these plants, it's crazy. Summer has been here for a while. It's like 90 something today, I mean 90 something tomorrow. The summer garden's loving it. 
the fall garden bolted very early this year. <laughs> it's sort of my fault as well, but definitely weather related. We have our beans over there. And it's just been, I think, a dramatic change if you guys saw the last garden update we did. But this was the, uh, yeah, I think this was the Jungle Gym garden update. Hit that subscribe button for me, guys. We'll see you soon. Take care.